feel like I should automate this, but that probably involves using the fucking vanilla Discord client again. Which is not happening. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! This is bodied by coding stream. Oh, did I totally sit on your, like, uh, resist stream or something? I have no idea what the fuck is going on anymore. I got up at, like, 1 p.m. That's my day. I've been wearing the same pair of pajama pants for as long as I can remember. This is how we're doing things today. So, unless this, that stream title is a roller coaster. You should have seen my go live notification. Maybe some of you did, but for those of you that didn't. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Look at the top of his head! <laughs> well, says, I like the and 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 in the same line. See, the and as in A and D is like Boolean and? And the, um, the ampersand is bitwise and, and we have to use that because P flex? is a bit mask. So you do bitwise and with the flag that you want to check to see if a flag is set on a player. And then later in the fucking script, where are we? To unset, you, uh, no, to set it, to set it, you or the flag with the current value of the bit mask. And then to unset it, you bitwise and with the inverse of the bit mask. Bruh. <laughs> okay, so anybody who's ever done anything technical is immediately resonating with the stream title. That's pretty good. All right, so here's where we're at. So there's an SRB2 um, variable. There's a, there, there's a CVAR that's used that isn't technically used or like given a fuck about in cart, but it's players for exit. And Fickle made me aware of this. So now we're going on an adventure. So players for exit, right? Has it, It's three values, I think. None, one, or all. <laughs> And it controls how many players, like out, out of all players who are actually playing, how many of them must be finished before we are eligible to start Countdown 2. And this interacts in kind of a janky way with stuff like Card Eliminate Last because it was assumed that nobody would ever change it. But as it turns out, the default value is 1. And if you change it to all, then as long as every player like has lives you effectively block countdown to from uh going off so i can extend the post race indefinitely as far as i want but this has come with a handful of new instances of weird behavior let's see if you can spot everything that goes wrong in my initial take <laughs> There's a lot wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> So, as far as I can tell, <laughs> the big problems are, um, 
This doesn't disable the other behavior of Countdown 2, it just disables the eventual exit. So stuff like Countdown 2 locking p.exiting at 99, and I believe exiting is used for the um, camera animation in the uh, F-Zero explosion. So that makes the F-Zero explosion bl bug out and attempt to go forward forever. Uh, you also explode twice, since we're holding for a full 10 seconds, so I think the, the value actually, like, completely wraps around or something. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what that's happening. And, uh... The big weird one is that on the results screen there, we had, um... P1 and P3 were both on the winning team, and if we look at the log, the script acknowledges that they're on they're both on the winning team. We have uh, here. And even like a last frame check for who has PF time over says, okay, P2 has time over because we set time over in our last tick uh, exiting stuff, or we unset time over from P1 and P3 so that we can rig the scoreboard appropriately. But if you look at the actual way the scoreboard pans out, P2, um, P2 had time over correctly, but so did P3. And I don't know why that happened. Also, the, the, um, the audio stuff was fucked up, but I kind of want to handle that later because I think part of that behavior might be split, split, uh, split screen being weird. So we're gonna, we're gonna no music our, uh, testing file for now. Take a look at that behavior again. You're not just having the stream with background noise while I'm deck building. Good luck with the code fucker muckery. Nice checkpoints, old dog. So P3, even though P3 doesn't finish here, P3 is on the winning team in this situation. Even if they're scored as zero, they're on the winning team. On the very last tick, we make sure to unset their time over, and reading their time over confirms that. But then when we hit the results screen, P3 is no contested. How the fuck has this happened? Well, let's first, we have a little uh, debug helper function somewhere around here. I love doing everything in uh, one file. We'll also have it... I fixed um, debug prints so that they don't do string concap before they know whether they should be printed, by the way, which should be significant performance improvements, because I'm the best. So, let's make sure that, like, lives doesn't have anything to do with this behavior. This isn't really a reliable read, but I'm not exactly sure what causes the no context text to come up, so if this, is, this, if this doesn't prove illuminating, I'll probably dive into source next and just search no contest and see what the game's internal check is for that. Some degree of fucking generalized code literacy seems to help here. Okay, so for that entire thing, every player read as one life. Which makes sense, because in order to unfuck this, I'm making sure to uh, set every player's lives to one every tick. Because if I don't do that, we can take a look at what happens right away. Rocket starts never ever, by the way. Maybe I should copy and paste the entirety of 200cc into a fucking, um, into this script, just so I can have it active during debug. So I can get around the fucking circle faster. <laughs> I 
actually, that was correct. Though I'm not entirely sure why. It does seem to have fixed the multi-explosion stuff, because I don't think the, uh, the countdown was running more than once. Why was I doing that again? Oh. Uh... X setting 99 isn't even happening anymore, which is interesting. Okay. Uh... At one point, this seemed like it was a good idea. If nothing makes sense in the near future, break class. So, that's one problem solved? Question mark? Hold on, let's fucking pair a fourth controller and uh, see what the hell is going on here. Let me actually test the timeout situation because I think that's that may have been where this was breaking. So we'll have two players from opposite teams finish and then wait to time out. Whose controller is whose? Fuck, 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 fuck. Bonk. Maybe we can only engage the live safeguard if we see a um, exiting 99 because that's a magic sentinel value. Oh uh, yeah, see, that's why. Because with live zero, it'll still interpret those players as finished. So countdown two is allowed to exit the game for us. All right, so. Maybe a way of handling this. Okay, so we'll add a new stupid goddamn hack flag because everything related to this is a stupid goddamn hack. Lives at one to prevent fuckery. Actually, will exiting count down in normal situations? Ah, shit. Okay, we'll figure that out in a second, actually. So we want to, if we ever see uh, P exiting 99, we want to fucking engage the behavior. If P dot exiting equals 99, then server dot fr fuck off countdown equals true. And then in a later block, server.fr fuck up countdown then or p players.iterate p.lives equals okay Irag asks is this functionality in the old friend mod how did you get around all that fuckery old friend mod works around countdown too Basically, um, so the exit conditions are actually completely impossible to figure out because it's some of the worst code ever written by humans and probably a strong contender for code written by chimpanzees. But the basic idea is that there's just a, uh, it used a similar approach to the one that I had in TE before Fickle inspired me to fuck around with, um, with what is the fucking CVAR players for exit. Where it actually just uses an internal timer. So if it ever sees p.exiting equals 99, it's like, oh, this is a timeout situation. We need to get the fuck out of here 
before Countdown 2 gets us the fuck out of here. So there's actually a really weird inconsistency where if a game um, finishes normally, it is a uh, 10 second wait for the end screen. But if there's a timeout, it waits for slightly less than five seconds because it has to finish before um, Countdown 2. This is ugly and stupid. And I want to see if I can get around it. I can always revert to this functionality if it ever becomes necessary, but... Being able to hold at the um, result screen for a while, like to con truly control when we exit instead of just saying, okay, let's bail before they make us bail, means that I have room to say, bribe the fuck out of Latin Snoo to make HUD animations for me. <laughs> Could totally do like a Splatoon style fucking bar filling from opposite ends type deal. Because one of the things that I wanted to play around with, this is something that I came across when playing um, Tycho Versus, of all things, is that um, in the last verse of the song, it hides score, which I actually think is the hypest fucking thing of all time. Like, the score is just replaced with question marks so that nobody knows what the fuck is going on right up until the end. And I kind of feel like I want to do something similar. So I can, like, pull the results out as some kind of dramatic reveal. And of course, you could, like, figure it out yourself. But humans are really bad at math, so... <laughs> So, let's fucking pop, um, we should probably actually have a debug print in here. Actually, do we already have a handler for exiting 99? Let's control F 99 and see if we have any magic numbers. Because 99 is literally used as a fucking bullshit sentinel value for this. Oh, hey, I caught myself before I fucking did it this time. Comparison, not assignment. Alright, so let's see really quickly here. We should see a lot of fuck off countdown in the logs once I trigger the timeout condition. Everything about cart exit conditions is terrible. This is by far the worst part of the fucking experience of writing this, is there being no way to disable cart just fucking off. It's so bad. I don't even want to deal with music yet. All right, so that's working in that situation because we're doing the live stack, but players that should be on the winning team are still time over in results, and I don't know why. Let's let's test in a three P situation with no timeout just to fucking double check something. Let's just make sure that no functionality has fucking changed while we weren't looking. I think Lives 1 might still be getting locked there. If I have to take a guess, it's probably because... Yeah, someone's exiting actually ca naturally counted down through 99. You want to see the worst thing 
ever? Like the worst thing ever, ever. I actually broke Slate's comment interpreter. There. It's the worst hack ever. So while counting down P dot exiting, we're just going to skip the number 99 because the number 99 is cursed sentinel value for fucking timeout countdown countdown to uh, countdown to shenanigans, and because that shit isn't exposed to fucking Lua, this is all we've got. I'm sitting here like, oh, well, this time friend mob will have fewer hacks than before. Nope. No. Incorrect. <laughs> Okay, so, the bulk of the F-Zero Explosion jank is now fixed. I don't know about music, but the F-Zero Explosion jank is fixed. But the fucking, the fucking, the fucking results screen is wrong. Uh, what do I do? Okay. So, let's bring up Source. Nobody's ever brought up Source. You're a fucking genius. All right, so we're gonna look for no contest. All right, so. K, K underscore cart dot C has two places where the string no contest is used. And I'm guessing that is the two different, um, yeah, this is the two different fucking layouts of the post race. And all it seems to be referencing is PF underscore time over, which literally shouldn't be set in this situation. On our last frame, on last frame of execution, only P2 has time over set. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? We are actually explicitly unsetting time over from P3, and yet somehow time over is involved. Let's see what exit level is doing. Let's do a little bit of poking around. All right, static void, command underscore exit level underscore F. 
send netx command xd underscore exit level. All right. Let's see what where else it's referenced. Tag mode round end. There's fucking vanilla SRB2 tag shit in here. Oh my god, where is this handled? Please fucking help me. Are we actually going into net command for this? This is just a fucking big ass. This is just brr uh, structs. Um. Help me! Oh, it's cute. If you try to exit level and you're not surfer, it just fucking kicks you. <laughs> Peace! Okay, command underscore exit, game underscore F. So this does... D underscore quit net game. Wait, that's exit game, not, uh... That's exit game, that's different. Okay, and it references G underscore exit level. This is the real function we want. Zaras, hi, hello. So what is on the agenda tonight? We are killing Countdown 2 once and for all. All right, so in G underscore game dot C, we have G underscore exit level. All right, uh, game action equals What the fuck? What the fuck? G underscore do completed? Oh my god! Who is fucking responsible for this? If not players.exiting and not players.pflags and pf underscore time over. Okay. So, in the exit state, if a player does not have exiting set, and they do not have time over set, we set time over on them. This is stupid horse shit, and I have to stop it. Okay, Zaras, seriously rubber duck me, what is problem? Alright, here is problem. There are a couple ways you can exit races in cart. You can either have everyone finish, and then an internal timer is set the fucks off after a while. Or, you can have fucking almost over half of the players finish, with card eliminate last on, and then a 30 second timer will start, and after that timer drops out, or the fucking, um, second to last player finishes, then everybody fucks off, basically. This is simplified. So in the case where, like, that timer goes to zero, that 30 second timer goes to zero, an internal flag is set called uh, Countdown 2, which is an invisible five-second timer that cannot be accessed via Lua in any way. And when Countdown 2 hits zero, when it's ticked for five seconds, we are thrown out of the net game and there is nothing we can do to stop it. Except there is a fucking weirdly documented CVAR that was only relevant to vanilla SRB2 called Players for Exiting, which can disable part of Countdown 2's behavior, specifically the part where it bails you out of the net game. It still has fucked up terrible side effects, but we can prevent it from forcing us to exit. However, there are more problems arising from this. And we're solving one of them. Okay, so the situation is we need p.exiting set on any player that is not, that we don't want to appear with um, time over. 
So let's see. Let's set P dot X sitting 69. Actually, fuck it. Actually, in order to fucking let let's remain somewhat compatible with um. Let's do the fatal music hack down here. We'll just reorganize that, and then uh, maybe we'll use 69 as our own sentinel value later, but... So it, players need P dot exiting set in order to not get auto time overt by the exit process, which is something we can't touch. <laughs> Let's go down the players for exit hole. Yes. No. All right. So if my understanding of the source is correct, this should suppress the behavior that's causing players on winning teams to show up as no contests on the scoreboard. The 10 second exit timer, which is way, way fucking longer than countdown two, is ticking down. Yes! Who fucking made it like this? Okay, so, where are we at now? I guess I should probably test fatal conditions? Yeah, testing fatals is probably important. Also, I need to add something that fucking sets players to exit all, all only in teams games and then sets it back in free for all. Okay, oh. Perfect. Excellent. So do we do we have the uh We sure do. Can I get encore mode state from Lua? I actually don't know if you can. I've never tried. Okay, let me think about that for a fucking hot minute. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right, so. Let's go ahead and. Uh, do players for exits. If server.fr do team stuff, then let's I hate how we have to do everything as fucking injected commands as server because CVARs aren't writable to Lua. Or readable for that matter. Fuck, 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 fuck. Well, at least some of them aren't readable. The ones that are default aren't readable. You, if you define your own, you have a reference to it. But anything internal to the game... Go fuck yourself. So that's why I have to ask, like, can I read Encore mode state? Because I can't just read card Encore. 
It doesn't work like that. Because, you know, everything is terrible. Players for exit. All. Versus server. Players for exit. One. And yes, they're actually fucking like that. music to die why <laughs> shit you're right it's such a good fucking track though oh yeah i actually do get to show off something i borrowed some fucking code from snoo that people might appreciate like might really appreciate to be honest so where's our exit? We'll change this really quickly to k item underscore jaws. What well, says I want to hear level music? <laughs> sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, you know? Alright, uh, for our underscore debug sneakers 2. And we'll reload. Check this shit out. Notice something? The only situation where I can get Joss to target a teammate is if they're the only fucking person in the range. So you can still do deliberate, like, fucking damage boost stuff, I guess, if you want. But I'm also working on a new heuristic for uh, team damage right now that still needs some fucking thinking, but, uh... You see what happened there? If you point-blank your teammates, in, in its current state at least, th th this has some uh, problems. But basically, if you point-blank your teammates, you get a penalty spin out, and your teammate insta-shields it. The idea is to move the frustration of team damage from the attacker, from the defender to the attacker. Because, like, obviously it feels frustrating to fucking, like, the effect on your team is the same. Somebody on your team is getting stunned and, like, losing position. But it's obviously way better if the person who threw the fucking item feels punished. As long as it's, like, as long as the game can take a reasonable guess that it was their fault. Zipolar says, wait, what if I'm invincible? And that's why this isn't finished yet. There's also some other stuff. <laughs> Because, uh... So, this is complicated. This... This gets maybe a little bit weird. So... <sighs> oh god, where do I fucking start on this shit? So... Basically... It's hard to check the properties of an object after it's collided with you, in this case because the um, should spin hook, should spin, should squish, should explode, all of those, those run after the collision have been done. And the collision deletes the object. So even if I were to do like the simplest possible thing and have all relevant attack items run like a mob thinker or something that tracks like how long they've been out, because that was my original heuristic for it, was just like, how long has this item been here? Have you had the chance to react to it? And it turns out that, um, well, that's a really ungraceful loop. Shit. That guy gets ruined now. Fuck. 
<laughs> All right, here's Scream Out. So, obviously, that's why I switched to the distance base to uh, her stick. But the problem with that is that the game doesn't even know what item you're hitting in almost every situation. It has no idea what's actually spinning you out. It just know who's it just knows who's responsible for it. So let's take the situation where your teammate drops a banana on lap one, and then lap two, you happen to be close to them, and with like 15 seconds to react, you drive straight into the banana while they're not while they're right next to you. Currently, the uh, team damage system will spin them out for that, and you will insta shield it because it has no idea how long that fucking item has been there. That is a long explosion. So I don't know if I can actually make this work. It's the the explosion is still going. Hold on, can can I take a moment? to just tangent on this really quickly. Where, where is it? Just appreciate how long this fucking thing blows up for. Let me find the start of it. So when you bust the last part... 5, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010, 1000... Still blowing up. Still blowing up. Still blowing up. New area, still blowing up. Still blowing up. Still blowing up. Still blowing up. Blows up. And it's not even dead. Eschatos is amazing. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. Eschatos. It's pretty cool. says, where's the usual Tyrone Summer Hellsinker shill spot? I've actually, I, have, I haven't played Hellsinker yet. I've been meaning to pick it up on Steam, but I'm also, I've also been meaning to pick up a couple other things, and I'm kind of like waiting right now. You mentioned a long time ago that it's impenetrable. It has a reputation for being impenetrable. My understanding from people who are like into the game is that it's way easier than it appears. It's just that it kind of puts up a front of being complicated as shit. Probably because there's like nine different gauges on screen. Slowly digging my own grave. Oh no. What are you fucking doing? So yeah, the team damage heuristic, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't know whether this can go in the mod. I don't know whether I can make it function well enough. And I also don't know whether it being there but being imperfect is better than the current behavior. Just because the restriction, basically, what I would have to do right and hopefully anybody who knows anything about fucking programming or SRB2B Lua will understand how fragile this is. Is that I would have to override fucking every mob collision in the game, check for whether it's a collision between a player and an attack item, and then have every attack item in the game ticking a timer on itself in a mob thinker, which are bad for performance, by the way. And when that collision happens, for it to pass the value of its internal timer to the player that it is fucking hitting, so that we have it in scope during a should X hook, so we can check how long the item that hit you was alive. This is fucked up.
Yeah, me too. Horn. All right, we're well into the ranking sounds now. Let's see. Do I have... Let's do shmup music tonight. So yeah, that shit gets really, really fucking ugly. <laughs> Not to mention, there are still some kind of weird questions about like, what happens with when somebody run, runs you over with grow? How do I determine fault in that situation? Should the default behavior to be to squish the person who had grow and then pass their grow timer to the person who got run over? <laughs> like, what about for fucking invincibility? Same deal? Like, this is what's kind of been blocking me for a while, is team damage stuff. Because it is overwhelmingly n the number one piece of negative feedback I get regarding uh, friend mod people. Sometimes th this seems to be entirely dependent on, like, person and the way they view, like, cooperative modes in general. But some people have their experience ruined when they get team attacked. And I'm trying to decide whether the answer to that is to fucking try and mitigate it and make it feel worse for the attacker than the defender, or whether I actually just want to hide that information from them entirely. Be or whether the answer really is to, like, make team attack impossible now and just provide some sort of, like, auxiliary system to allow teams to break the fucking frontrunner wall. Because already in friend mod, even with team attack on, even when you're able to bean your fucking teammates, a glut of players near the front of the pack is very difficult to unseat. Rock says, is this too complicated? Punish both when point blanking, but have spin out? I mean, I can do that like right now. Although I'd have to, um, I think I'd have to have a table of uh, spin duration for various items. You could absolutely just set both players, because uh, this is the entire fucking hook here. If we're not doing team stuff, bail. Find the asshole based on whether Source exposes this, this to us through Inflictor, which is the um, item that we're hit by, or through Source, which is the player who is responsible for the item we are hit by. If we can't find a uh, responsible player, bail. Get distance between the player who's be being hit and the asshole. And then if that distance is below a certain threshold, then spin the asshole out for two seconds, play the insta-shield animation on um, the defender, and return false, meaning we don't spin, we don't squish, we don't explode. Rock says, yeah, because I could see issues in punishing just the orbital owner. Yeah, because the obvious situation is like, if somebody fucking veers into you for no reason, now we have like actual weird fucking reverse griefing shit. <laughs> Johnny says, here's a question. Can you make the asshole have the same explosion as when you spam a horn too much in a certain amount of time? Oh, absolutely. Let me literally just like control C this entire block just for um, for fun purposes. Because now I kind of want to see this happen. Let's try this. Map. Our debug sneakers too. 
Pretty good, actually. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> so you somehow find a way to point blank your teammate and just blow up. Huh? Am I the asshole? I accidentally hit my teammate with the jaws and fucking died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have to check against, like... Because, let's see, in what situations does car hard code set? K underscore spin... K underscore spin out timer. It's all gonna be in K underscore cart dot C. Which is a fucking million billion line file. 275k of just one file. Oh my god, it is actually almost 9,000 lines. Woo! Okay! Wipe out slow. Check off road collide. Boost power. Oh my fucking lord, what is any of this? What the fuck? Is it always three times tick rate over two? So a little over a second and a half. Oh. Is it like this forever? <laughs> okay, hello. Luxor says, C, AJ, <laughs> implying. <laughs> Sometimes I gotta go through hard code to figure out what the game's actual, like, behavior is. <laughs> Soup Bowler says, wait, if you place a banana and your teammate purposefully runs into it, then what? See, like, this is, this is the situation where, like, I wanted to do a lifetime-based thing where after the item has been out for X number of ticks, for X number of seconds, anybody who hits it, it's their fucking fault. You had ample time to react or whatever. But if you got like point blank that didn't have time to react, then then it's on then it's on your attacker. You're you're blameless in that situation. And I wanted to do a situation based on lifetime, but the fucking mob that's hitting you, that's inflicting the spin or explode state or what have you, isn't actually available in the hook that determines in, in the hook that Lua is given to say, okay, do we spin or do we not spin? Return true, return false. You don't have access to the fucking inflictor reliably because the inflictor is destroyed on the same tick as part of the fucking collision behavior. Which is really annoying. Because it means that without some super fragile, awkward way of Passing fucking information from inflictor to player by overriding collision handling. We're like hooking into that. We're basically left with only naive detection. And says, you're not gonna go full Mario Kart battle mode and have it do nothing unfriendly hit, but the penalty is that you lost the potential of the item. See, there's a toggle for that in current friend mod. And what we immediately discovered is that it makes... I don't know, maybe it's time to reevaluate this assumption, because I haven't played from Mod the fucking Friendly Fire off in a really, really, really long time. But... The snap assessment, and it was really strong from everyone in the test sessions, was that... Like, that sort of thing is alright in battle. 
maybe, but in race, it gets really fucking dodgy because it basically means that a glut of allied players can all hold defensive items and spam them backwards with impunity to pick off players who are advancing basically one by one. So I could totally implement a fucking uh, friendly fire check in again and run a couple more test games in the current state of things. But that finding seemed pretty unanimous and strong, so I don't know if I'd expect to see something different. Also, I'll be right back. back. So Soup Bowler says, have you thought about offering rewards to players that don't hit teammates rather than punishing the ones that do? Yes, but it kind of leads me to the same idea. Rewards for finesse are always going to be more accessible to the front of the pack because there's less going on up there. So without systems to compensate in the other direction, you risk doing some super dangerous shit where like you enforce snowballing with that mechanic. Now, here is the fucking third path, right? The third path is that we, we, we rethink what it means for friendly fire to happen, period. And this is an idea that I've been kicking around for the longest time and I can't fucking iron out the edges of it but something about it is really compelling to me the tldr is that instead of fucking items negatively affecting your teammates if you hit them with them instead you are passing the item to your teammate you nail your teammate with an orbinaut and instead of them like getting hit and spinning out that goes into their box and now they can fire it This works pretty well with the idea of the overhead item spy stuff because there's some awareness of, um, like, you can defend a teammate by fucking passing them a defensive item when they're out and vulnerable. And it kind of rewards both players in that scenario for lining up the shot. This definitely steps super far into the realm of like, we are now fucking with race. <laughs> and because we are now fucking with race, TM, it's on me to like actually design and balance something that works, which is super scary. Because yeah, the immediate questions are like, what if someone is already holding an item? Do we replace? Do we queue? Do we fucking swap? The swap might be the funniest option. <laughs> Just yoinking items from your teammates. <laughs> Just outright griefing. Well, asked, is it possible to differentiate between a hit from a fired Orby and an Orby that is orbiting? Yes, kind of. They are separate um, mobs. There's uh, Orbinaut underscore shield versus uh, just Orbinaut. The problem, of course, being what context are we differentiating the collision in? 
because if we're doing it in a Shodax hook, then we don't have access to the fucking mobs anymore because it's been destroyed. Log says that sounds really fucking cool as maybe like a companion add-on, but I don't know how I feel about functionality in front of mod itself. Yeah, it's definitely it it is entirely different scope. It would like fundamentally change the nature of what I'm trying to build here. Cause I know some people have expressed interest in like using friend mod essentially as a tournament framework rather than as an alternate game mode that it makes more sense to fucking set up a tournament in like groups of three or four instead of bothering with the free for all heat one heat two nonsense which is something that deeply appeals to me but this also deeply appeals to me and so i'm kind of like i obviously don't want to crowdsource design but it's why I'm kind of like sitting here, bro, I am just sitting here, wondering how I want to proceed, you know? It says automatically uses the item, no problem. <laughs> Technically valid? We could also totally pop the item out of their character. We could drop the item in the same way that the item is dropped if they use shrink. Ow. So if you get team attacked, you drop your item and that item appears in your box. So like, obviously, players who are like trying to defend a given position, this gives them the tools to like, I don't know, somebody who rolls fucking uh, multiple items can distribute among their team and make trap placement a little bit more um, more difficult for anybody who's trying to overtake while also making sure that their teammates are insulated and like have a response to fucking run up draws or something. This is what if you make getting hit by a friendly item give you a boost, make it an actual strategy, then no downsides. <laughs> See, all of these things like there are so many fucking things I can do, and... Oh, fuck off. Get out of here. And I kind of feel like the way forward might actually be for me to literally implement all of them with, like, toggles and numbers tweaks available in Sivaris, and just run the worst testing sessions imaginable. <laughs> And it says, roll a single Orby in first with the teammate, reach your skate velocity that much faster. I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, any gi giving any fucking frontrunners access to fucking ways to convert defensive items into distance gets scary. Maybe there are ways you can compensate for this. I don't know. I don't know. You know? Fuck. I just got a YouTube comment on my fucking stream archive channel that appears to be 78 of the um, trumpet emoji. Oh no, it's not on my archive channel, it's on my main channel. It's in the horn mod trailer. Nice. And then somebody really intelligent responds to this is your brain on singularity with you kept dying at the same part, XD. <laughs> And says teammate items act like item boxes question mark could also fucking work that says throw on someone what if you targeted a first place teammate with the spb i am choosing to leave the ability to do this in the game because there are valid reasons to do it if you are if you have an ally in second and an ally in first firing the spb potentially allows your ally in second to, like, reach escape velocity together with your ally in first because of SPB rush. They'll pull overpowered power items because the effect of the SPB is that second place gets supercharged items in order to uh, pressure first while they're fucking trying to dodge. And so a pair of allies in tandem can fucking go far with that if you're careful. 
And I think that is a cool tactical thing to do, although I'll probably add a warning if you're about to fire an SPB at your teammate so that people know what they're doing, because I think intentionality wins in that situation. Rock says they become the ultimate wireless combi team. Yeah, all the speed and none of the horrible fucking <laughs> shenanigans. So, like, if I was gonna go with, like, if I was legitimately going to, like, build a specific team mechanics into this, it would be categorically a different thing. Right now, I don't think it necessarily even qualifies as a variant game mode. It's just variant scoring. It's not a variant game mode yet. And I don't know whether I want to go in that direction yet. So, like, TLDR, design hard. <laughs> kind of want to... We look into whether fucking Encore Mode is exposed to uh, fucking Lua at all. Is fucking Ladder Snoo online? Is there any script currently that uses Encore Mode in a read way other than a write way? Anyway, currently... Oh, man. The old code is the worst thing on the entire planet. All right, all I want is the fucking old coordinates for the uh, old results stuff. If server.fr finish timer, then at this point we need to fucking show the uh, which team has won. Am I control effing then? Am I in fucking cocaine? Okay. Guess who didn't look at the fucking definition of the function? Okay. So it just returns a team ID. Um. So what do we have? What are we setting up here? Okay. So I actually don't need to use any of the local um, HUD stuff here, because all, all, all of these, all the team order and um, our color, our prefix, their color, their prefix, this is all just to make sure that the um, your team is always on the left. That's the only reason that exists, but the win text is fucking absolute, so we don't really give a shit. We'll only calc that once. Just fucking cache it real quick. And then... God, real team color. Fucking amazing. are yeah i just had a function for that shit it's been so long since i've touched any of the fucking um hud code stuff so that should just be a uh, prefix of winning team name of winning team wins Probably need to fucking, yeah, set back to white. I actually feel like I'm fucking underwater right now. I can't think for shit because I'm thinking about all the fucking <laughs> team attack shit now. My life is ruined. Nice. Oh yeah, I was thinking about doing a speed run today. 
but uh, I got in touch with the um, current mods of the um, cart leaderboards in speedrun.com, and they said that they don't plan on accepting any um, unofficial EXEs. Which means no interp, no bird mod, etc., etc., which is funny because... What was I fucking... Uh... Oh god, that's gonna be a hilarious overlap in split screen, actually. What the fuck am I talking about? Boomer Rain today. Okay. Um... Fuck. What was I talking about? God damn it. I hate this. Just AJ, you good friend? I'm having a time. Okay, speedrun, thank you. So, it's weird because my fucking original run was submitted with shaders. And they let that through. But apparently, uh, now the party line is no non-official EXEs because they might have changes in them even if they are totally net game compatible. Which is, like, XD, okay, but, I mean, like, I, I see why they're making that decision, even if it makes me a little bit upset. So I go back to fucking vanilla to try and, uh, like, get used to 35 FPS again. I can't drive on 35 FPS anymore. Maybe it's that I always couldn't drive on 35 FPS. But, and I, I'm just, like, now realizing how much worse things were for me back then, because I had no reference point to compare it to. But I cannot... I absolutely cannot fucking deal with um, 35 FPS anymore. It's so distracting. Like, independent of the fucking motion sensitivity issues, where I can't, like, actually look at it for too long without getting a little bit queasy. Buller says, you can still do them for fun, that way the EXEs don't matter. That's kind of the way I want to approach it. Like, my leaderboard place isn't super important to me. Anybody who fucking knows me is gonna know, like, my time and how I'm fucking driving anyway. I don't think anybody is all that concerned about, like, the precise fucking legitimacy or whether, of whether the interp build is genuinely 100% Fucking genuine cart crew software. <laughs> but it does kind of put a damper on the whole endeavor, you know? And says, if you wanted to cheat, you were going to make it look the same. How is this a rule? I mean, yeah. That's the thing. Like, anybody with fucking... The game is open source. It is trivial to, like, mod out the check that um, checks for, like, Lua add-ons in... Um, when, when you're entering record attack. It is trivial to mod out stuff like, uh, you could just have the fucking wad list command return something fake. Like, in the end... Hell, I can fucking, uh, <laughs> I could play at fucking, uh, 144 and just, like, record at 35 FPS. And if it weren't for the occasional weird skybox, nobody would ever fucking know, you know? That's the other thing, and I'm obviously not going to do any of that because I don't care enough, but... Like... In the end, the only way you're gonna fucking actually find an illegitimate run from somebody who is, like... Actually legitimately attempting to break the rules is the same way you verify any run. You watch the entire thing and make sure it's all fucking legit. Okay, so we have the fucking basic, uh, team win stuff. I actually don't know whether I want to do the intros the same way. So let's do team intro, boss intro. Team win. Actually, we specifically need a handler for, uh... Let's actually have, uh... Let's 
Do I already use Fug somewhere in here? Let's use three Gs. That's that's fine. It's the wrong side of the block. No, it's not. Best asks, why is this called friend mod anyway? Because it's a mob of friends. Next question. So we have the, the super basic tie handler. The run back system. Fuck, 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 fuck. Because I think this is a really cool idea for like casual uh, play on like dedicated servers. So where I'd like to be able to, like, do an RTV-style vote to just, like, either do the same, do the next race with the same teams, or literally just, like, restart the race, same map, same teams. I think this is a fucking cool idea, even if I think it will probably be tragically underutilized because it's hard to surface as a feature. But... The problem with it is that right now, I, I basically have to change the place that I'm writing the um, information on placements for next race, because I have to write those to CVARs to make sure that they're available from replays and then when uh, during the next game, because we're doing balanced teams based on the fucking um, finishing positions of each player. And so that has to be in a CVAR at the start of the next game so that replays can read it as well as, like, servers can read it during actual play because fucking CVARs are the only things that replays will actually keep track of in terms of state. They won't store, like, player struct stuff. They won't store, like, variables local to the script, etc., etc. And because I'm registering those as people finish, because I don't want to do it all at once because that risks overflowing net command. Long, long story. Basically sending 16 separate commands would be ugly. Then, uh, because I'm doing it as they finish, there's no real way for me to fucking roll that back to say, all right, actually assign teams the same way you just assigned them because we need to do a run back. And so I could do something similar to what I did for the PRNG hack in Old Friend Mod, where I do the worst thing of all time, and I fucking... Where, where is this amazing code? I actually have a slash delimited um, string CVAR, which they don't even tell you is possible in the documentation. I have a slash delimited CVAR that stores all the fucking values. So that instead of fucking one entry in netx command, instead of 16 entries to netx command, it's one. Or in this case, in, instead of six, it's one. Source the fucking five parameters used for the PRNG, which turned out to not be necessary as long as we don't do anything random in a map load hook. Whoops. And the uh, name of the target player in boss mode, which depending on whether boss mode is forced or not, is either don't pick this guy again, they just played, or pick this person, they just won. Why is everything I ever create doomed to fucking be swallowed in scope creep as it becomes more popular than I expected? I want to fucking die. Zaras, didn't you handle Encore Fatal yet? Last hit me with the music, which I greatly appreciate, but I actually don't even know whether Encore is readable from Lua or not. Let's see. Let's control F Encore and see if anything that looks like Lua exposing is here. Um, yeah, because it's, it's in a CVAR. It's in Card Encore, but we can't read Card Encore. There's some uh, param encore mode. It's a structure code better and don't get feature creep destruction. I mean, that's why I'm rewriting this whole fucking thing. 
And it's been way easier this time. Re-implementing everything has taken me like a fraction of the time and has allowed me to do things. Like, it's allowed me to unravel the fucking mysteries of Countdown 2, for instance, which never would have been possible in the fucking spaghetti forest that is, uh, Old Friend Mod. Yes. Fuck dot Lua. You got a problem? This is the rewrite. It will remain Fuck dot Lua forever. If MB mods have a problem with that, they can suck my dick. That's how I feel right now. Yeah, so I'm not seeing anything in here that suggests that Encore mode is actually exposed outside of... There's a bool in G underscore game. So they're not reading directly from the C-var the entire time, which makes sense. It has to get snapshot at the start of a race in some way. Doesn't seem like there's anything from Lua, though. Here's the don't encore map flags. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. So it doesn't seem like it's disposed as a game pro property, but maybe it'll be in the map struct or something? So what did I, what did I, because I referenced the fucking map struct in uh, Horn Mod for something. So I have to figure out where this actually gets set. Okay, it's map header info, but map header info is static, right? There's no way it has a fucking... I mean, I can iterate over map header info and just fucking spit out everything, maybe? Can I? Oh, fuck. Um. You have anything in fucking, uh, the Lua docs for this? Oh, shit. Let's open that in a new tab, actually. Actually, why are we? I can also search it over here, fuck it. Can't type cold hands. Okay, so map header info, that's just... Okay, so is the entire construct exposed to Lua? Is that a fucking internal thing as well? My brain today, dude. I should not be programming. This is a bad idea. Globals and then level header. Okay, so it's just a map header info is just what's fucking defined in SOC, right? If it's just what's defined in SOC, it's not going to contain any information about Encore mode. I thought maybe it was like a construct that Hardcode was building up to send to Lua about the fucking situation, but nah, I think it's just SOC. That says, AJ, help. Resources doesn't look like a word anymore. I'm sorry you're making an idle game. Is it terminal? <laughs> also a solid fucking boss intro. Literally just that one bar looping for an entire race in a fucking short radius around the boss. God, meta tables, get out of here! Actually, wait. You know what would be really fucking funny? We're gonna do something smart. Let's go to let's go to TE real quick. Four pairs in. No, four uh, KV in Paris. G. So we're gonna go through the entire table defining fucking every global. 
and we're just gonna print. Okay. I'm sure this is gonna throw some fucking fit at me about Concat or something, but let's see. So we're just gonna fucking print the entire global table and see what happens. <laughs> Alright, uh, I am reasonably sure the script actually did not load at all, so we're going to see where we erred. Morning. Attempt to concat local v, a function value. Alright, so should we just be printing keys then? Probably should just be printing keys. Well, says Azulane is having an idle event with a rhythm minigame, but it has no offset, so it's immediately trash. Nice. Okay, so we printed all the keys. Hey! Those are actually reasonably formatted! Alright, Control F Encore. Fuck! <laughs> That's a good try. There's raw set in there. Are these in any fucking order? Hey, I didn't know Git Card Excel was exposed here. It could be objects with more stuff in. Yeah. So I'm looking for like a fucking relevant looking struct. I need to recursively print. No! I don't know how to do recursion. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it just gonna fucking throw a fit if there's no, uh. Wait. Keys and. Tables? Oh, um, tables and keys? Cause I don't know how to. F I don't know how the fuck to like work with the values if they're all fucking. If there's shitting functions in there, like, I know how to. I know how recursion works. It's just like none of this looks like none of the keys look like they're a fucking structure, and the values I don't even know how to touch those. Check if the type of the value is an object. I don't think Lua has that fucking concept or <laughs> exposes that information in that way. Fucking hell is James on? Where are people who know fucking anything about SRB2 Lua? Uh. Let me fucking ask James before I go on the world's worst rabbit hole. Which I'm not even gonna ping him because it's annoying. Is Encore exposed to Lua? I don't know whether to ask in here or in fucking cart crew. So we're gonna like the sanity check to see if there are any tables in here even. Okay. Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait just a fucking second. Why are all the globals in the fucking globe? What? <laughs> how? How? Why? <laughs> how the fuck do you even do this? <laughs> the global table is in the global table. What the fuck? <laughs> I hate this. We 
can access the global table as a global. This is going to stack overflow. I mean, I can maybe filter it out. Actually, let's let, let's just fucking before I do any more work. Let's look. Coroutine, string, table. So those are all just like, those are collections of fucking, um... That's just like utility functions in the fucking default namespace. Same for HUD hooks. Yep, same soundtrack. So like HUD.add covered under that. And the entire global table. Thinkers, coroutines, string, table, HUD, and... Yeah. So none of those seem like they would even be there. <laughs> like seriously, if Encore was exposed, it's not gonna be in the fucking Lua coroutine space. I'm pretty sure you have the Encore global. Oh no. Is it just an undocumented global and I didn't try the easy thing first? Where do I fucking... Let's put it on a level time one shit. Fucking disorienting now. Okay, so as far as I can tell, that's not there. Maybe. There's no reason this would be accessible if it's not in fucking. The global's table, but... We can fucking try to believe anyway. Yeah. No luck. It says stack overflow causing memory corruption and patch the variable in at runtime. Dude, if I can actually construct some way of getting to fucking the C internals from Lua, it will be a miracle. Not because I believe that like the Lua interpreter is any way a sane implementation or like correctly guarded or anything like that, but because I'm convinced that if you poke any of the internals of fucking SRB2 or cart anywhere, the whole thing just fucking seg faults and falls over. Like, there are no locations where code can be changed. The fucking shit is in stone tablets. Alright. What other shit do I have around here? We, we did Death Smiles last time. We can't do it again. That's cheating. Uh, are these the arranged versions? Okay. <laughs> I, I love the, these versions of the fucking OST. It, it's... Uh, the fucking Yamaha keyboard shit is so cheesy. And says, just write C, AJ. C is objectively less useful to me right now, though, because I'm not going to convince anybody to use a fucking EXE mod. Although, at this point, I'm starting to think... See, I'm torn, because this is, like... This is an extremely credible use case for me to start fucking learning C and, like, contributing to hard code and making the game better. Like, if I had any fucking legitimate reason to learn, it would be this. But... On the other hand... There is K underscore cart that C, which is like 8,500 lines of.
It's just hacks on hacks on hacks. Nothing but respect for the devs, by the way. Hacks on hacks on hacks are what happen. But holy shit. I look at this fucking file and I'm afraid. And I think all of dev also agrees that k underscore cart.c is fucking garbage, by the way. It's like k underscore or uh, cart.c cart and then like... Uh, What is the what is the other fucking hilarious file? What was fucking lat taking a look at earlier when trying to merge something? Oh yeah. It's uh hw underscore main dot c just oh no <laughs> it's a good time <laughs> by the way there are renderer functions in the net code it's it, it's exciting stuff Oh my god. I I thought I was gonna fucking get on stream and have like a productive day. And then I got on and I got fucking trapped in a design thought space and now I just wanna fucking jump off a bridge. I don't know how to do anything anymore. Basically, uh... Here's my explanation of what it feels like to fucking do anything in the cart ecosystem. This is what it feels like trying to fucking iterate over the globals table and find the fucking globals table inside it. This is me every fucking day I open Slade. It's like, Lua isn't even that bad. b -Lua even isn't that bad, even if it's bitwise shit is a little wacky. And there are like five different ways to concat strings that are all slightly different. But it's just dealing with the card internals, dealing with the undocumented and unexposed behavior. Lua is made so weak too. Like if you try to do stateful shit in HUD hooks by default, if you try to like write to a player struct variable, if you try to fucking do anything that the system thinks is stateful, it will punch you out of your HUD hook, like, don't do stateful things in the HUD hook. Meanwhile, like, it, this is all done in the name of net safety and shit. Meanwhile, I can fucking... wild true end in a HUD hook. Wow! Amazing! There are no execution time limits! There's only the fucking barest concept of recursion protection! Wow! Yeah, like, net safety really needs to be our fucking concern in this situation. They refuse to give us fucking file IO because people are gonna do bad things with it. Meanwhile, for like a period of three weeks, some guy from a fucking mobile connection, barely speaking English, joined my server like 10 times every day. And every single time he joined, he would get kicked and his master server address would get set to Pornhub.com. So his computer was making requests to Pornhub. You can just make people do that. Hope that guy didn't fucking ho hope you're not 11 and have like parental controls on your PC or something. Jackass. Alok says, while you're here holding yourself hostage, do you have any problems with parking lot panic? I'm suffering right now. Want to get shit out of the way. Um, 
Not enough gay robots? I don't know. I think it's alright. I'm told that the new version has some uh, exciting performance on software, and that's about it. I have an update. Do you want to test it? That's fine on OGL. I, I mean, I guess. Go ahead and send it to me. I'll fucking... I need to not be doing this at the moment, I guess. I'm gonna test it on Interp and break your skybox, though. Waiting on that file. Kazai says, what you need to do is write a new game that compiles with SRB2 Cart's netcode. But Cart's netcode is like the number one problem with Cart. <laughs> like every, every fucking day, every fucking day this happens to me, I'll like join my own server, I, I'll join my server, I'll fucking authenticate it as an admin, I'll set my name, I'll set my color, I'll set my skin, I'll play for a while, I'll close my client, and then my client goes fucking ape shit and sends every net command I have ever sent to the server all at once, 20 times in a row. Be and the authentication fails. It tries to kick me as I'm repeatedly rejoining. And the server literally hard crashes. And this happens to me like every fucking time I play this game. It is blowing my mind. Card is amazing. Why does it have to be so bad? Alright, so we're gonna... We're gonna actually launch this in F-Cart so that maybe skyboxes work. <laughs> Let's see. Parking lot panic. Wow. Also. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Those are awesome performance fluctuations. Yo! Definitely thought those were gonna have collision. Bug. They do? What? Can I tree skip with those? Okay, now I have to try to do this. Worst driver, by the way. Never ever actually threading through the balls. Not even close, baby. What are you even doing to make performance fluctuate this much? Map literally runs three times worse based on which direction I'm facing. Try the new shortcut. Unfortunately, I can't see it because my brain doesn't work too good. Ricardo's under the map. Drift left off the jump. Um, and hit the blue spur. Ah! But why? There is absolutely no way I would have ever seen that without, like, watching somebody else take it, for the record. 
<laughs> Angle God. It's so out of the way, you can't even fucking see it while you're lining up. So I want to fucking store into it. I want that desperately. says, I still don't know what's wrong with that. Collision calculations? I'll explain. The OpenGL renderer is the worst piece of shit on the planet. Hmm. It's still better than software somehow. It says, no, imagine playing this without uncapped to be stuck at around 15 indoors. Okay, hold on. Let's... I forgot to add an item set to the shortcut. Nice. So let's let's pop F cart with um I don't know if it has uh, dynamic resolution stuff in software on by default. But let's 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 do this in the software render really quickly. Not to like bag on L Dog, but because I find this legitimately hilarious. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, brother. Delete software. Delete this. Okay. As I says, looks better though. Yeah, until you fucking go up or down a ramp and the fucking world distorts like you're in a fucking Salvador Dali painting. Also, I think I have fog turned off in GL so I can see better. My cut is good, you just have to hit it right. It seems interesting. It seems like completely undiscoverable, which is the primary issue. Bonk. You have to go so far out of your way without, and it's literally unseeable. You go right past it at the beginning of the map. I don't know if I buy this. Also, holy shit. Okay, so what are the what are the F cart commands for dynamic resolution in software? Let's see. Let me fucking find this shit really quickly. F cart read me. Target times and downscaling order are fully customizable. Is it in video options? Dynamic res options. Dynamic resolution on. Oh! Oh, man. Hey, it's running better. It's absolutely running better. Like the text is janky, sure. But this is like way, way, way more playable. The 
rainbow there is cool if you have some sparks for it, I guess. Rug says, what build is this since when was dynamic resolution a thing? This is Fickle's build. She uh, posted it in uh, Derifto a while back. Huh? I might pin it to make sure that people know where the fuck it is. Did I miss a lap count taking that? Okay. This text is awesome, by the way. Software Dynamic Res is unironically cool as hell, actually. Frame time to downscale for this many frames out of this many. Frame time to upscale for this many frames out of this many. So I've just ruined the settings. Bonk. What was it, 12 and 8? It's pretty neat. Sight. Wobble. Wonk. So, like, regarding the performance. I am, like, the foremost proponent of everyone no longer designing any of their maps around software, but that only works, I think, if this is, if that approach is taken by the base game as well. Like... As long as somebody can launch the vanilla game... Hey! Thanks. Miko... What? Oh. Name pronunciation day. My brain don't work good. Thank you very much. So, the, the fucking, I think as long as somebody can launch the game in software and have it perform reasonably in, in, in like the vanilla maps, as, as long as they have that expectation in their head that like, okay, I played software, I played offline, I played on fucking base game courses and it worked fine. As long as that's a thing, I don't think it's responsible to release a course that is guaranteed to fucking tank in software. It's a bit messy. I do like the new visuals, though. I am undecided on the cut. It feels like it's missing something, but... It's definitely neat to be able to rainbow that without having to fucking bust your ass. 25 extremely heterosexual pennies from Chase. Thank you very much. And that says, wait, what do you mean the source code diffs are provided in email format? I mean, well, she means the source code diffs are provided in email format. So I can just do that. And there you go. Fucking apply the patch. Easy, easy clap. This is how we use fucking Git, I guess. L-Dog literally had to draw the fucking shortcut path for me. That is hilarious. This doesn't even look like it lap counts. I would legit assume that this doesn't lap count. I didn't even bother to try it. Because I have missed lap counts for dumber things. Like... I am absolutely certain after being shown it from the fucking map creator that it lap counts, because obviously that's the way you designed it. 
but there is no, no way I would ever assume that that would actually lap count. Hell, given what I fucking learned from community tracks recently, that might be a kill plane over there. Like, I realize that when people send things to me for testing, it's because I am, like, bottom one percentile of, like, successfully navigating fucking courses on site read. I'm really, really legendarily bad with navigation and visual cues. But there's, there's no fucking way <laughs> this is alien to me. This seems, like, egregious even for my usual level of competence. I hit the mod testing button. I'll try to hit it so I can show it off, though. I really should fucking auto exec this, but oh, how many? How many fucking? Oh, I, lo I loaded the w the work in progress. Fug. Mistakes were made. Alright, so let's launch FCart and OpenGL and add-ons, parking lot panic. Right now I've ruined everything. Actually, let me really quick see something here. Nice. Wow. It actually does not give a shit about resolution. Playing 320 by 200. I want to die. Wow, this looks like shit. And it still does not give a crap about my resolution. So I'm allowed to have qualms with this, right? <laughs> like my knee-jerk response, and I don't intend to be dunking on you with this, and I realize fully that other people probably perceive this completely differently. But this shortcut is invisible, unreliable, and nonsense. That's a perspective from one person. Sometimes things just aren't for you. But... I don't know. It was sent to me for testing. This is my, this is my impression. You're fucking lining up for the angle blind if you even know the shortcut exists at all, and then you have to deal with the trees on the way out, and also make a leap of faith if you'll actually lap count by skipping the drawn starting line. Also, it's a last lap cut, which I really fucking hate. Or not a last lap, but a last turn cut. Like, that shit is why Vanilla Hotel tilts me, despite, like, otherwise being a fantastic track. It's because nothing matters until the last set of boxes. Although it's probably not efficient on the last lap, actually, which is almost even weirder. But yeah, I don't know.
someday OpenGL will fix blue being an invisible color. <laughs> no! Fuck. I actually haven't played um, Super Circuit Rainbow Road with uh, the stat block yet. Jesus Christ. So on older builds of F card, I definitely thought it was a little bit um, like I was getting some weird stalls where I wasn't on uncapped. Maybe it's that they only show up in net games or something, but right now it feels great for me. No! Yeah, it was just like micro stutters for me. And there was a legitimate issue that got fixed where it was like interpolating backwards in time effectively. That I think was the only visible on super high frame rates anyway. Which is why nobody else had reported it up till that up until that point. And this build has that fixed. Yeah, there was a problem with like a time scale of the interp or something. So that occasionally it would literally just be interpolating backwards and showing you like old game states, which is why it would appear to be flickering and stuttering a little bit. I interpret it as a frame pacing issue because I'm a dumb fucking orangutan. Jace asks, what stat block is this? This is, uh, Shadow. Yeah! Eve is 8 speed, 5 weight. Joint commission financed by myself and Chromation, a cart crew developer, by the way. Elsword is canon in the cart universe. and sprited by Chengi, who is fucking amazing. I've been trying to do this really fucked up micro-optimization thing lately, where like, if you inward drift as shallow as possible, you still get the full spark gain. Like, you still get the full spark bonus from inward drifting. But if you have to outward drift at all to compensate, it becomes not worth, like, instantly. Plus, you gotta be really fucking easy on the analog stick. I think I also might want to, like, set my dead zone lower for this. As I said, you're technically also a cart developer, which has serious lore implications. Nah. I don't develop for cart. I don't, I'm not like, I don't touch the mainline game. I'm just doing add-ons. This asks, do you think it's possible to make F-Zero GX maps in cart? Only if they're fucking flat. As soon as you start trying to redire redirect gravity in this game, you'd either need to use the OGL shaders build and effectively make it all horrible nonsense tricks. <laughs> like the fucking old SNES shit where you take a static background and fucking wrap it up into a tube or whatever, except that on an entire course. You'd either need to do that, or it'd just need to be flat, because there's no way you're getting away with fucking making players go uphill, like fucking 90 degree uh, vertical roads. That nonsense is fucked. Flip Goop uses fucking uh, vid underscore flip or something, which is a different thing. Actually, I think there's something in Flip Goop specifically. I wanted to take a look at this. Um, let's see. KL. Or a KR, excuse me. KR. L. Flat pack. Uh, lift, rift, where is... One of my 
fucking... Oh, shit, random numbers. Flip meme? Flip meme! Okay. Flip meme. Me too. Anyway, I was under the impression that there was some fucking script somewhere in, um... This is for all the ice shit, which is a fucking masterpiece. If V2. Nice! Nice, nice, nice! Input detection... I swear to god there was something in here to detect, like, the anti-screen uh, flip stuff. I don't know, I need to step away from this for a second. BRB. So, I've gone and fucked myself, because I don't know how the fuck I actually want to proceed with TE, whether I want to take the full-blown fucking custom game mode, like embrace team mechanics and go nuts with them type of thing. Yes, I did enjoy it. Whether to fucking go insane with it, or to keep it the simple, uh fucking low friction very faithful to vanilla mechanics type thing where it's really just a scoring retrofit and I actually don't know which direction I want to take and I don't think I don't know I think I have a general sense of how people feel about it but in the end I'm gonna have to actually like make a decisive choice based on what I'm more interested in doing or what I think would turn out better. At least to start with, at least to fucking provide some kind of ground to test. So I actually don't know if I want to do any more de development today, or like for a while. 
Also, as you may have noticed, I cannot fucking string together a sentence today. I am like beyond all reason absent-minded. I could have sworn that I got good sleep last night, but then again, I also woke up rested after four hours, so who fucking knows? All right, sweet. What's the double KO sound bite? It's a fucking combination of an SNK, uh, SVC Chaos announcer line and a fucking uh, fanfare from uh, Soldem. I think it has only actually shown up in a legitimate game once. Oh yeah, and also the rap battle because everything. I'm gonna ask, are you doing the English gooder? Very yes. Part of what I liked most about Old Friend Mod was that the mechanics are really, really fucking simple and minimal, which makes it incredibly easy to pick up and understand. As soon as I add complexity, I'm gonna have to justify the fuck out of that complexity with added gameplay value. That is basically where I'm standing. Plus it kind of screws with the idea of the mod working as like a tournament structure thing. Although I could totally add a fucking C4 to disable all the wacky stuff. says, what complexity would you even be looking for? Put simply, fucking team mechanics. I'm too attached to the idea of replacing friendly fire in some way with a beneficial or, like, lateral effect. I think, like, boost on allied item hit is both too simple and way, way too fucking complicated to keep in check since it obviously benefits teams that are being pressured less, which means they're likely to be winning in this state. So it's just an escape velocity mechanic. But stuff like being able to fucking exchange items between teammates, that's really fucking interesting. It feels like it opens up a lot of emergent opportunities that might be fun to explore. Rock says, do you think the Jaws change is in the simple or additional mechanic territory? The Jaws change is just how everyone expects Jaws to work in teams, I think. I think that is just the removal of a foot gun. Like, I think changes that increase intentionality are almost always good. And that's a change that increases intentionality for sure, because... the. Maybe there is like a fucking 0.3% chance that you actually intended to fire your jaws at your teammate. But... Nah. Nobody is doing that shit on purpose. Almost always when it happens, it's because jaws targeting is a little bit finicky and it'll flicker onto your teammate for one frame because fucking... Your opponent that you were targeting happened to be considered behind you for like a single fraction of a moment because checkpoints are weird, and so became uneligible as a Jaws target. Like, it's just removing a foot gun. That says boost on team hit, but multiply it by the player's current position. Friendly, I don't know, but Zar says friendly bananas are boost pads. And see, these are interesting ideas. But. They mean this is categorically a different thing. Changing vanilla item mechanics. Like, everybody fucking knows what the, the items do in this game. If you ever played Mario Kart before, you know what they do. And if you haven't played Mario Kart before, you're an alien, but you'll understand what an item does at the very most after the second time you use it. I don't think there are any items with any degree of complexity to their fucking application. And that's to the game's benefit. Rug says, I do love inherent Orby shot dan danger in teams. See, I agree with that. I think it's actually a fun dynamic. However, it is the single biggest point of contention in the entire fucking history of this mod's development. Some people hate team attack, and even I get frustrated when somebody fucking blatantly beans me with a fucking Orby 
from nowhere. They just like randomly deploy when I'm clearly next to them, stuff like that. And I could obviously add a fucking escape hatch that returns to the basic behavior, and I think I'll do that regardless of what I do. But... Spending time on new changes, and then saying, Well, hey, if you don't like my changes that I didn't put enough thought or time into, you can just revert them. And then not making that the default state. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. This says, TBH, you could just pull a Mario Kart and teammate ignore. Yeah. See, that's like, that's territory we touched before. Friend mod legacy, for lack of a better way of describing it, does give you the opportunity to um, turn off team attack, where you'll just insta-shield all um, damage and negative effects that come from your team specifically. And we decided that it threw team balance out of whack, that it made it way too easy for a small group of players to pull ahead and defend in ways that weren't very fun to break. I actually intended to put on the FM version of this soundtrack, but the fucking first album in the list is apparently the Arrange. And I'm fine with that. But like, if I fucking drop down here. This game, Show and Shaw's soundtrack is fucking amazing. All right, let's see. So my score on Valhalla Zero Present is 9967264. And Twills is 9967246. <laughs> Amazing. Why is my fucking start menu just randomly opening when I click on that link? Light shot is cursed. I actually can't even open that fucking link. I have no idea why. Copy. This says recently added FF14 text tools. Enjoy your ban, idiot! Oh no, exposed for illegal modding! I wanted to try one of the fucking, um, the map mods that, like, put the, um... They, like, mark the locations of, uh, maps for Decipher. Anyway, Eldog, get a fucking better host, please. I'm begging you, love yourself. <sighs> okay. I can't even fucking focus anymore. I'm, like, blitzed for absolutely no reason. And if I fucking sit on stream any longer, I'm just gonna start frothing at the mouth. So... I might actually fucking step away from the PC for a bit and try to think about what the fuck is going on. Because I don't even know if I can fucking drive a cart right now, not gonna lie. So, uh, I trolled you all. Two-hour development stream where I got absolutely nothing done and rambled incoherently. You were tricked, I fooled you.